Asato ma sakamaya Tamaso ma jyotir gamaya Mrityar na amritam gamaya Om Shanti 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 Welcome dear friends, devotees and seekers of knowledge. We are once again taking up the journey for this Thursday evening, preparing on the series that we have been talking about, and that is no less than the most dynamic, Mandakya Upanishad. Mandakya, remember? This is the smallest with only 12 mantras, and yet 12 mantras, you can actually print it in an A4 sheet, but Gaurapada, Shankaracharya, Guru's Guru, he wrote 215 karikas. Karikas are like verses on those 12 mantras. This is how powerful it is. So this book by Swami Nikhilananda is by Karika or Gaurapada, Shankaracharya, Bhashya on the Karika as well as the Upanishad 12 mantras with which we are continuing now. This is the fifth week that we will be going on. It will take beautiful understanding and no, we are all short of time, we are all seekers, modern time, nobody has time. And you want to do things in a jiffy, you want to make a telephone call to the mobile and one second time get connected to America, to England. <laughs> you want to ride the fastest plane to travel to place to place. Similarly, from this search in search, from ignorance to knowledge, unreal to real, travel, why not take the fastest track? And that is this Jnana Yoga with which Mandakya Upanishad. And that means what Hanumanji when asked Rama, Rama said, yes, Mandakya ekame balam mumukshe vibhukte. We'll liberate you, just study the 12 mantras and understand it. That means what? Just do Jnana Yoga? No. Sanatan Dharma talks about and all religion almost talks about, particularly in India, that you should follow all four paths. The beautiful, powerful karma, selfless karma, beautiful bhakti, love for God, divine grace, and seek for prayers. Third is follow the meditation, breathing technique of Kriya Yoga. And the fourth is this Jnana Yoga. All four methods of Mandakya Upanishad knowing and understanding and you know then what Paramahamsa Ramakrishna Vivekananda Gurudev used to say when you strike a match stick if the match stick is dry it will burst into flame and <laughs> if you are ready that means supposing I have a mound of cotton cotton if just match stick falls on it it will go woof burn into flame. I have seen it happening. Think. But if the mastic is wet, it's not ready. We are not ready. And you keep on striking, it will not light fire and maybe the mastic itself will break. So yours and my intention is to be ready. Be ready is what? Seeker for truth, purity of mind and soul and living life for the welfare of other people and always hold on to that anand, the joy, even in the times of suffering, know that when the tough times come, when the suffering comes, plant the seed for success right then. Look for the success, plant the seed. It requires a beautiful resolve of mind and faith in spirituality. Not this material world. And now, enough of Gyanam Bhajan, let's take on understanding Mandakya Upanishad 12 Sutras. The first mantra talks about is about Om. The second mantra is doing about self inquiry. The first and the second mantra are talking about Om and self inquiry. Self inquiry continues till 3, 4, 5, 6. And this is self-inquiry. And 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 is on the Omkar inquiry. So now, 
this inquiry for what we want to discover the truth what is the truth of this reality so called the world so called this so what is mandakya upanishad is saying i am atman brahman we know from the mahavakyas four mahavakyas aham brahmasmi pragnana brahman i am atman brahman and this tat Tom Asi, you are that. Notice all of them are actually saying the same thing. That I am the Brahman and recognize it. So this I am Atman Brahman. In other words, if I have to know this reality world, I have to understand this Brahman. And what is Brahman? Pragnana Brahman. That means the consciousness itself is Brahman. And who is this Brahman? this world where is it the brahman let me know self we see it if brahman can get me everything i would love to have some brahman with me aham brahmasmi main hi brahma hu i am that brahma now okay so i am brahma in other words what i have to inquire about myself to inquire and know about brahman notice how beautifully simply logically is coming up to this process is to coming into this journey and taking us across so now taking us into what is vedanta saying that what is happening is you are missing out the reality the existence what you think is real is not real so remember we sang just now take us from unreal to real and in this reality when we are taking up the journey when you say inquiry into yourself say it says that we are four sayam atma chatushtha that atman is four thing four thing one is that atma is this waking state the moment i am talking about talking about who talking about myself me not believe in god go to sky go to so and so spiritual place religious place go to cave and meditate for 6 years or 20 years no he said just inquire about yourself so beautiful simple powerfully packed in this mandakya upanishad and this is why this is one of the main upanishad out of 108 this is the top most like in the 10 upanishad so first is the waking we are awake so in this waking world what is happening i am experiencing my love hatred like dislike joy and with the five senses with my mind i am experiencing the world of likes and dislikes and with my five senses i'm procuring the world and pumping it into through the brain through the five senses into my mind this is how i'm experiencing the world in the waking time and we say this is real and when i second state is the dream sleep state when i go into the dream sleep state mandakya is saying that you you know we think it's only dream oh i was just dreaming no the dream sleep state also there is you are there and you are dreaming have you ever realized have you ever thought of it that if you who are not there you don't have a dream you don't have a dream object you can only dream only if you are there so take it on from there understanding logically building up and third the waker dreamer third of our self existence is the deep sleep state so in the waking state i exist as a subject and the world exists as an object correct the knower and the known don't get bugged with these terms but just understand it simply in the dream i exist that's how my dream exists knower and the known i'm dreaming maybe in climbing mountain himalaya or i'm dancing in florida or bahama visiting switzerland in dream known and no one no one has to be there to dream of see the land and the third is the deep sleep state here what is happening the knower 
and the known both merge. There is no mind, there is no thought, no separate state apart from just one. Experiencing, not experience, non-experiencing. Experiencing, no experience. Blank totally. You say, why don't you call it blank? No, it is not blank. Blank is like zero. Whereas it is the seed, the deep sleep state. We say deep sleep state is nothing much to talk about. What is there? It's only a thing that is just, that is just, you know, just not there. Deep sleep, what is happening? <laughs> that is the seed. That seed has the potential to appear itself in the deep sleep to dream and to waking. That seed knows when to grow root, when to grow plant, when to grow leaf, when to grow flower, when to grow fruits. That seed. Now, Mandukya is going ahead and saying that until and unless you are aware, like you are aware right now of listening to me, seeing me, unless and unless you are aware, in other words, unless and unless you are conscious. See, if I am unconscious, if I am in coma, the world vanishes for me. Worst is if I am dead, world is zero. And little better, unconscious, little better, deep sleep, very bad in coma. So this consciousness is what it saying is the fourth. This is the fourth. That connection is what we are missing out. And that is the most important thing is the fourth one is called the Turiya. Turiya means fourth in Sanskrit. Is who we really are. The fourth one. Fourth one is empowering the deep sleep. How? We don't know anything. Mind goes to sleep. Thoughts go to sleep totally. There is nothing. But how is there consciousness? Consciousness is the only thing present in deep sleep. When you wake up, you say, I had a wonderful sleep. How did you know that? Because of the consciousness. Similarly, when you wake up from dream, many a time you recollect your dream. Some people say, I don't dream. No, 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 everybody dream. <laughs> only thing you may not remember them. So, dreamer and that is dreamer is the knower and the dreams. Consciousness is empowering for the dreamer to know that and dream to know it. Then come the waker. This whole world I'm experiencing with my five senses and with my mind. Now, these things have got a term in Sanskrit. The knower is called in Sanskrit in Vedantic language is Pramata. Pramata. And the instrument of knowledge is with which I see experiencing the world like the eye, like the ear, like the mind with which does the deduction and makes inferences and like the smell, taste, touch, etc. These are the senses. They are called Pramana. You must have heard it in many times in many languages in India. You say Praman kya hai? That Praman is which is that one which you have got. And then the object of knowledge is called Pramayam. And what you find, the knowledge is called Prama. Now, what do we do with this? <laughs> these, these four states is coming, I'm coming up with a powerful controversial statement. And what is that? Existence depends on knowledge. What's so controversial about it? Think, I go to, let's say, go a, a deep, beautiful blue ocean or Lakshadweep. I go to Lakshadweep, beautiful blue ocean. And you say, I have never been to Lakshadweep. I now come here, now the object is already there and I now see it and now I get the knowledge of Lakshadi. Vedanta Mandakya Upanishad saying, no. That Lakshadi will not be there unless you had knowledge before that. 
How? I never saw Lakshadweep. I have never been there. I only come here, saw it. Then only I know about it, isn't it? Vedanta is saying, no. Mandak is saying, you did not go there earlier, yes. You have not seen it earlier, yes. But you knew about it. Either through internet or travel agent or pictures or book. You knew. So it is indirect knowledge you had. Knowledge has to be there before object comes. So the experience, existence, object, existence depends on knowledge. That object, I can only know about it if I have knowledge about it. Now, experience. It's a trick word. Experience means an object, like I am experiencing this clock, object and consciousness. Both have to be there. Experience meaning object and consciousness. Now, why do we think usually the other way, the controversial, is because we have grown up like this. But notice one thing, objects in your dream. See, if you are not there dreaming, it will not be there. Second thing, supposing you are dreaming of eating KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken or Pizza and suddenly you wake up, oh, 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 I have to go for Sunday meditation workshop. You say, okay, I will put this pizza in the fridge, which you were dreaming in the, <laughs> in the dream you had the pizza. You wake up and you remember the pizza. I'll put the pizza in the fridge. When I come back, then I will have it. No, the objects cannot be there because you're not dreaming anymore. It was only in the dream. And mark you one more thing. Just because you were dreaming about that pizza or the KFC chicken, it is not going to come back when you go back to sleep and dream again. Have you noticed? You generally never dream the same thing again and again. You heard it. I dream that dream again and again and again. I wish we do. You know something? Long, long time ago, once in my meditation, I went in and then I had a wonderful experience of Paragamsha Ramakrishna and Babaji. Now in my sleep that day, in dream, I saw Paragamsha Ramakrishna coming. And some other time I'll tell you about the dialogue and all that. It was beautiful. And it was so blissful, so happy a state just by being with him. And he was smiling and sitting there. Later on, I keep on thinking till today, I want to dream that dream again, but it doesn't happen. So now, objects in our dream exist only because we have the knowledge of that. Now, in the waking world, it's the same thing. Now, going into, let's say, I go into Bahamas or Mount Everest. If you have the instrument of knowledge, which is Pramana, if you are there as a Samatha, which is the knower, knower, Samatha, Pramana is the instrument. And if the object is there, like the Lakshadi or Bahama, object is there, knowledge will come to you. You will know about Lakshadweep or Bahama. Similarly, is the picking up knowledge on any subject, academic, research. You look at it. You have to have the instrument. You cannot be unconscious and still learn. Whether playing games or learning or playing sitar or eating or anything. You cannot do anything unless you are conscious. So, Going into object of awareness as known and object of awareness as unknown. Both are objects of awareness. You knew about Lakshadeep as an object of not known. But you'd see, you know, it was indirect knowledge. Now, let me show you one more good example. Let's say you can experience two objects if you can experience them separately then you say they uh, they exist separately if you can experience them separately remember the experience meaning object plus consciousness i have to be conscious an object has to be there 
let us say this clock. I can experience this clock because the clock exists and I am conscious, right? Now, I can experience this paper, tissue paper, separately. This tissue paper and this clock, I can both experience both of them separately. The objects exist and I'm conscious separately, provided they both exist separately. I can also experience both of them together. Now, what does this mean? If you can experience them separately, you can say, yes, the paper exists, the clock exists. So now, what are we getting from this? What independently exists? Can anything experience, can you experience anything unless you are conscious? Can you experience anything independently of awareness, consciousness? No. So, what are we getting at? There is nothing that can be experienced separately. Nothing. Unless you are conscious. And we are coming to, this is the Mandakya Upanishad. Knowledge or awareness cannot come unless there is a knower through an experience. The knowledge will come to only to a knower. Knowledge, if there is an object, knowledge will come if there is a knower. Knower cannot experience anything unless there is consciousness. So, the object, the knowledge and the knower all are <coughs> dependent on to the consciousness. Did you get the point? This is what Mandak is getting. So this is called trikuti of knowledge. Trikuti of knowledge. The object, the knower and the known. All three exist in the consciousness. Getting on from there, you, the independent of the awareness, independent of the consciousness, you cannot exist. There must be a knower for the knowledge and you and I, we are all knowers. Without eyes, I am still aware, I may be blind, without eyes, or I may be dumb, dumb, or deaf, without ear, without talking, but I am aware that I don't have eyes, I am blind, I am aware that I am deaf, consciousness is still there, I may not have the instrument, that particular seeing thing, so understood, things, objects do not exist, it is controversial, big controversial. A lot of paper have been written on it. Unless you have knowledge. The knowledge has to be before the object. Then you perceive with your instrument, object, instrument, knowledge, knower, consciousness. You see this world. Where does knowledge come from? Knowledge comes from knower. Knower comes from consciousness. Knowledge comes from consciousness. Now, this is that Triputi I told you. Now, the beautiful statement of here, with which we will come to a wonderful understanding, that the experience which is dependent on to something else is not true. It's called Mithya as per Vedanta. A simple way to understand, let's say, hot potato, the heat of the hot potato comes from where, is it belonging to potato? No, if the potato becomes, you know, kept for a while, it will become cold, the heat is gone. The heat of the potato is mithya, though temporarily it is there, it is not that you can't experience it, it is there but it is a mithya, it is false, as per Vedanta. Very important understanding for life and this research for self. Second, where is the heat of the hot potato comes from? From the hot water. The hot water heat comes from the hot pan. Isn't it? Hot water didn't have its own heat. It came from the hot pan. The hot pan, unless it is electrical pan, it doesn't come from the pan, it comes from the fire. That heat of the hot pan comes from the heat of the fire. But they are all false, but the heat of the fire is intrinsic, it's real. Other three are mithya. Hot potatoes heat is mithya. Hot water heat is mithya. 
hot the heat of the hot pan is mithya they don't exist so now understand knowledge depends on the object object depend can come to we come to know because we have knowledge knowledge depends on the knower and knower cannot exist unless there is consciousness in other words consciousness is only truth everything else knower known object is all mithya not real and this is called in vedanta maya and the consciousness is called ishvara god this is a beautiful understanding which inquiry into the self i will delve more into this both known and the knower they depend on the consciousness because they depend on the consciousness neither known or knower is real this is what it means by <laughs> this world is not real you are experiencing it temporarily and soon enough if you are unconscious the world vanishes it is dependent on your consciousness this is vedanta saying it is not true give you a simple example to remember it like the hot potato another example like the paper and the watch both can exist separately but provided they are not dependent on to each other it is not dependent on to the paper to exist this is not dependent on to the clock to exist i can experience them separately but all these materials and the object when it is dependent on to other it is totally a mythya so just like the hot potato example just like the clock and the paper example i'll give you one more to easily remember we all love to watch tv there's beautiful tv screen and inside the tv screen the movie is happening whether it's a terror movie whether it is a hostile movie attacking movie action movie love scene movie or you know dracula coming in or king kong is coming and breaking the screen is not bothered screen is not attached second point understand screen is not bothered whether the scene is running tv is running or tv is off and screen without that you cannot watch the movie without consciousness you cannot watch the reality you cannot watch this movie of life unless you're conscious beautiful no i wish you good luck let's take up the journey on the mandakya and mandakya ekavevalam mukshe vimukte remember ramachandra's advice to hanuman ji jai guru om